Hi, this is Harry Guinness for Tuts Plus, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create and present a presentation using Keynote for iCloud. Last year, Apple released their iWork for iCloud beta, which allows you to use their iWork suite of apps, pages, numbers, and Keynote from almost any browser on almost any Mac or PC. In this tutorial, I'm focusing on Keynote for iCloud. So I've logged in here to iCloud.com and I'm going to navigate over to the Keynote web app by just clicking there, which will take us over and give us an overview of all the presentations we have saved into iCloud. These were two presentations I was working on earlier. This one here, you will see the details of in the written tutorial below this screencast. For the screencast, I'm just going to create another new presentation. So I hit Create Presentation and I get to choose a theme. You can choose a standard theme or a wide theme. They're the same themes, just with a different screen size. Now, you want to choose a standard theme if you're going to be presenting using a regular projector. However, if you're going to be presenting using a widescreen TV, as is becoming more and more common in boardroom settings, then you want to use a wide theme. If you don't, you're going to get letterboxing at the edge, which is visually very unappealing. For this tutorial, I'm just going to use a standard theme. In the written tutorial below, I used the showroom theme, which is a personal favorite of mine, but there's a load of great themes in here. For this tutorial, I'm just going to use a simple one, so I'm going to use Gradient. Select the theme, and then I just hit Choose, which opens up the Keynote for iCloud Beta app in a new window. I'm just going to maximize that there. There we go. To get as much room as possible to play with. So we've got the title slide here, and Keynote is quite good at walking you through what it wants you to do. It says double click to edit, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Just double click there. And I'm going to enter the title for my presentation. I'm just going to call this Tuts Plus is awesome. I'm going to add a subtitle. And I'm just going to double click to edit there. And we're going to run with it really, really is. Harry can't type would also have been a suitable subtitle judging by that display. Now. When you're editing text, you get the text options panel over here on the sidebar on the right. The main thing to focus on here is the paragraph styles. Keynote has great paragraph styles already built in. Titles, small titles, subtitles, body text, all the way down. If you want more control, you then can dig into the other options. But all the paragraph styles are based off combinations of these options already. I think the subtitle could do with being a bit bigger, so I'm just going to increase it maybe to 50 points just to do it for more than anything. I could also make it a different font, maybe light oblique, just to get a bit more emphasis on it. And I could play around with any more of these settings if I wanted to. The other thing worth highlighting is the shrink text to fit box that's checked by default. It doesn't really come into play on title slides unless you're making really long titles, but if you're working with body copy, it's great to just leave that ticked because then Keynote will dynamically resize the text that you're working with so that you won't have any text flowing off the edge of the screen. You won't copy and paste a big chunk of text in, move on to your next slide, and then when you go to present it, find that you've only got three lines and they're really, really big. Right, so this is the title slide done. So next up, I'm gonna create a slide with a quote on it. So over on the bottom left here, we've got the new slide button. So we just click that and we get to add a slide. Keynote has great templates available. You can dig in deep and sort of edit these and make your own templates, but I really just like to work with what Keynote gives you. There's pretty much any combination of text and image that you want. I'm just going to do a, a quote slide, which is great when you want to put some inspiring quote up on screen. You click on the template you want and it just 
opens up there. And again, Keynote sort of instructs you how to use it. I'm going to type a quote here. Um, we're going to run with the same thing. Tuts plus is awesome. And, well, I suppose I said it. So we're going to say Harry Guinness said it. As you can see, this is using different paragraph styles. That's the attribution. And that, I think, is, is quote. Double click to get back into it. And yes, that's quote. Now, you might have just got a hint over there. But if I single click on any text object, you don't go into the text edit. You, put, you go into the text box edit. You can see the control handles there. So I can resize the text box if I want. I can also have some control over the text styles. I can also add fills, borders, shadows, and reflections to the box. For example, if I add a reflection, you'll see the text is reflected there, and you can change the opacity. Similarly, if I add a shadow, I'll get a shadow added to the text. The border, we'll put a border around the edge of the box, and a fill, will fill it in. Obviously, you'll want to play around with opacities if you're doing things like fill. You also get two more menus appearing here. Text gives you more granular control of the text like you get when you double click in to edit it. And Arrange allows you to control the position and size of the text box as well as, well as its position on the Z axis. If you're not familiar with that, what the Z axis is, is it's the front to back. So if there was an image that I was dropping in here, then I'd want to make sure that the text was forward of the image. So if I just dragged and dropped the image in, it would appear on top. So I'd click on the image and I'd send it to back. Next, I'm going to add another slide. This one, I'm going to include a picture and some text on. So click on the new slide icon and I get to pick one of the templates here. I think we're going to run with this one with just an image and sort of a, a title thing. So we're going to call this a picture of the author. And we'll throw Harry Guinness in here. To add an image in, you can just open up any file explorer, such as Finder, which I've got here, and grab an image and just drag and drop it into your presentation and you can see that the image is added straight in and uploaded and included in the presentation which makes it super easy to do. You could also use the image option here click there and you click choose image and then you can navigate to the same thing. I like to just drag and drop it in. If you click on the image you get to have some control over it. You can add a border, a shadow or reflection like before Keynote includes six presets of various different styles and combinations of the three options there. For example, there's a sort of white border, and then uh, you've got a drop shadow and things like that, and you can add them if you want, uh, or else you can just go in and do it by hand. You get the same range options you get with the text box, so you can send this picture back or forward if you wanted to have things on top of it. If you want to resize the image, you click on the control handles here and you can drag, make it smaller, bigger. If you double click on the image, you get to edit the image within the image box. You can see here with the image bar that I've got the crop icon selected, which means I'm editing the image box. If I click on the little picture icon there, I'll go to editing the image so I can then move the image within the box. You'll also notice these smart guides popping up allowing you to align your image easily to your canvas or to other objects on it. You can resize it using the control handles there or you can also use this handy zoom slider or else if I wanted to make it a little bit wider with the image box I could just grab the control handles on the image box and do that. Then click done. Uh, probably not the best, so I'm just going to move that over to the side, make it smaller again, because it was the size it was 
for a reason but the smart guides make it really easy to keep everything in line and looking good Okay, this is a pretty poor presentation in terms of the information I'm giving, but it's still quite a lot prettier than almost anything you'd get at your average meeting. But say I have a colleague, and he's going to add the real meat to this presentation. So I want to give him access so he can just go in and edit it. Now, rather than emailing files back and forth, Keynote for iCloud allows you to share the presentations and collaborate with people. This is where web apps like this really come into their own. To do that, I just click on the little share button up in the top menu and then share presentation. That will get the presentation ready to share and will give you a presentation link that you can just email. If you want to stop sharing the presentation at any time, you can just hit stop sharing and you can also add a password. I'm going to do that just in case anyone gets any funny ideas of about following that link and going in and editing that on me. So set a password there, password hint, I think I'll remember it. Don't need that remembered for me. This will just set the password. Uh, obviously, if you are setting a password, you need to send that password along with the share link otherwise whoever you're sharing it with won't be able to access it all right we've got the link there can copy and paste that into an email if i wanted or into an iMessage or something so i'm just going to close out of that now let's say our friend has gone in and added all the great content he's going to add so we need to get this presentation ready for actually presenting going to go back to the title slide here and we're going to add some transitions. If you just have nothing selected on the slide, you'll get the slide transitions options in the sidebar over here. I'm going to choose an effect. The effect I like most is reveal because it's quite nice and subtle. I don't really like the over the top bouncing and flipping and rotating images, but I think reveal is sort of the best of the, of the lot. I'm going to click on my next slide and I'm going to add you know what, I'm going to go mad, I'm going to, I'm going to throw in something like clothesline, just so you can see some of the more effects that Keynote allows you to do. These, uh, these animations are one of the things that really separates Keynote from a lot of other sort of web apps, is that you get a really quality program. I'm sure watching this screencast you've noticed just how smooth the interface is and how well everything just works. It's really an Apple product. And I use Mosaic for that. Now, say I wanted to duplicate this slide or delete this slide, I can just right click and we've got news guide, skip slide, duplicate, delete, all the sort of options there. You're not just limited to left clicks when you're using the web app, so we're just going to duplicate that just because we can. The mosaic effect is, is also duplicated. So we've got our transitions in place, we've got our slides ready to present. Now it's time to present. So when you're ready to do that, you just navigate to your presentation and hit play. That will open up full screen. You can ask out if you want to. As you can see, I'm presenting this on a widescreen monitor, so maybe I should have chosen widescreen earlier. But we will carry on. Now you can use the left and right arrow keys to move through your presentation. So I just hit right and we get reveal. Tuts Plus is awesome. Harry Guinness. Yes, yes it is. Next slide. There we go, close line. It's a bit, uh, bit more dramatic of effect. A picture of the author, Harry Guinness, and there's my, my model picture. And uh, next, we're going to get a mosaic fade into the same slide because we duplicated it. I can then escape out of this just by hitting right again and we go to black one more time and we're straight back into Keynote. There's no need to worry about saving the presentation. In case you didn't notice, you will constantly see a little saving uh, dialogue up here because Keynote for iCloud is always just saving any changes you make. The other thing to note is that I can access this 
presentation on my Mac, you know, through Keynote, and on my iOS devices through Keynote because they're connected into iCloud as well. Similarly, any presentation I make on them and save to iCloud, I can open up in iCloud Keynote and then present them or edit them or share them with people. I've been Harry Guinness and this has been a tutorial for Tuts Plus. If you have any questions, comments, throw them underneath the article in the comments section. There's more in the written tutorial beneath, so I suggest you go and read through that as well. Thank you.